Here is a 2024 Toyota Camry XLE in celestial silver over black leather. What do you get in the different trims, comparable rivals, and some pros and cons? I'm Anthony from Hawkeye Rides, and in the front, you're gonna get standard by LED headlights. XLE gets LED daytime running. The lower receives chrome that's gonna be on the side curtain. Horizontal gloss black lines that's gonna be on the in-large grille. The XSE gets the sport mesh grille. Because we're in the state of Florida, you can get the XP package, which would also make it look a lot more dynamic, in which they offer it in five states, North and South Carolina, Alabama, Georgia, and like I said, Florida. Over five inches of clearance. This is not gonna get the Sportune suspension because that goes into the XSC. So it's standard McPherson strut front and a multi-link rear. And underneath the hood houses the 2.5 liter four cylinder with 203 horsepower and 184 pound feet of torque. That's paired to an eight speed automatic transmission. So comparing it against Honda Accord, you don't have to worry about that eCVT transmission or a turbo because we don't have either. And Going against the turbo, you're still going to be getting better MPGs for the highway in this. Obviously, the hybrid will outperform this with your MPGs. And here, you're going to receive 27 MPGs for the city and 38 MPGs for the highway. So comparing against the hybrid Camry, you're gonna lose 17 MPGs for the city and nine MPGs for the highway, plus five horsepower more when you go to that variant in which when you're looking at competition, Toyota is one of the few that offer a hybrid, a four cylinder and V6. So when you're starting to consider, do I need more performance? Then you go TRD and you'll get it lower ride, a little bit more athletic, over 300 horsepower. You need something that sips fuel, start with the four cylinder and then work your way to the hybrid. But looking at the Honda Accord, this is going to have all the blends of which you will not be able to find there because they only have a turbo variant. They don't make the 2.0 turbo anymore. So it's the slower 1.5 liter turbo charge. And then the hybrid, which is going to be a soft drive, same here, but they don't have the performance anymore. Going against Nissan, you got the VC turbocharged engine, which is quick, but it's an Ultima. So you're losing interior and cargo capacity when comparing it to a more of a full size sedan, whereas that's more of a compact sedan, even though they have made it a little bit longer because they discontinued the Maxima. And that will leave you with Kia in which they have the three different variants similar to Toyota. The rear can get more aggressive if you go to TRD or an SC or optioning the XP package. Here you're gonna get a single exhaust outlet and it's gonna be more under the radar with LED taillights and Toyota Safety Sense 2.5 Plus, which includes frontal collision with pedestrian detection, rear cross traffic alert, blind spot monitoring, lane keep assist and adaptive cruise control. So when you're starting to add these features up, when you go into Honda, you start having to go up different tier levels. Quick release going into 15.1 cubic feet. Bag holders start us off underneath the floor, gets the jack and a spare tire. Split fold the rear in the back at a 40-60 split. If you're tall like me, just climb in a little, push it down. That's going to increase the cargo to the Camry. This is the four-cylinder. We need to go inside, start it up so you can hear that exhaust though. power seat adjustment, leather front seats, heated front seats. The nightshade edition starts with the soft tech material. Headroom and legroom. The Camrys are wide inside, driver focus setup. You get the wood look that comes underneath the gloss black elements to just separate everything with this nine inch infotainment screen. Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, Sirius XM, AM, FM, streaming Bluetooth audio, navigation is an option. Put it into reverse with the reverse camera and the lines do expand out. Six speakers is standard, optional nine speaker JBL sound system and the dash is going to be a more flat layout. And I like that they still put the same pattern that's on the passenger side on the driver and you get a little storage pocket right here for some change or whatever you need. Dual climate control settings, QI wireless charging that opens up into a storage pocket, USB 12 volt and the key fob 
for the XLE. Leather around the shifter with three driving modes and you have auto hold, which when you're at a stoplight, you could just push it and it will hold the brake for you instead of you holding the brake. It's soft to touch where it needs to be and it opens up to a long storage pocket with two more USBs, three spoke steering wheel, multi-function, Toyota Safety Sense 2.5, seven inch gauge cluster that can go through an array of information and this is all of the settings for the vehicle plus your audio sound system and any settings for the vehicle. The door panel is going to be more every day, but it goes flush more or less into the dashboard. It is soft to touch where it needs to be, one touch up and down for all the windows. Storage pocket has a beverage holder carved out, no moonroof with an auto dimming rear view mirror. For the back seats, headroom and leg room with storage behind both of the front seats, air vents on the XLE, armrest with cup holders. The door panel is going to have the same materials that's found in the front. It's going to be soft where it needs to be and about two beverage holders carved out. Sliding into the center, the floor isn't flat. The rails are pushed up enough. Butt and shoulder space will be shared because it does kind of contour inwards as you're noticing. But like I said in the front, the cameras are wide outside. So it's going to be wide inside. Headroom sitting in the center, not really a big deal for somebody that's over six foot tall. 2.5 liter with 203 horsepower, backing it with 184 pound feet of torque. Is it better than a Honda Accord or the VC turbocharged Ultima? Let's see. To start off with, it's not going to have as athletic of a performance drive as it would if you had a V6 variant or the TRD, which you would have a sport tuned suspension. And it's also lower to the ground. When you're getting this trim, I feel you're just looking to sip fuel, have some luxury amenities because you're getting upgrades like leather and heated front seats. And you're wanting to tick the box for all of the safety. When you're comparing it against the two main rivals, whether it's Honda or Nissan, I like Toyota just a touch better only because you can option features and it's not necessarily that long of a vehicle, but you still have a little bit more cargo capacity than the Honda Accord. The back seat, I can fit pretty much everywhere without any issues. And going against Kia, they have been getting very aggressive and competitive when you are looking at variants that are similar in which they offer a hybrid they offer your everyday drive and they also offer performance underneath the hood so it takes the box in that category which is going to take me to some pros and cons and that's what we're going to start talking about the pros for the camry have to be that you get the options nine inch screen i like that we're unlocking this once we go up to tier levels. I don't like that you get a seven inch standard, but you can option the JBL sound system underneath this tier. So you don't even have to go all the way up to an XLE in which if you go Honda, how are you gonna get the Bose? You gotta go more or less to the top trims in order to get it. Some more pros is they have different tiers that will unlock different performance and different styling. And if you live in five of the states of the US that offer the XP package, you can get a significant discount to make the exterior more stylish and you're not forking out to a V6 variant because that's gonna be on the SE. Some cons start off with the driver focus setup. You don't really need it for a family sedan in which they are doing a refresh, so I'm sure they're going to address these issues, especially with the infotainment screen, the way it is stationed in the vehicle and optioning a seven or nine inch. It would be nice to see a larger screen because this is a longer and wider vehicle. The steering wheel design has became a little bit more older the way it looks in which it would be nice if they kind of clean that up too in the refresh the gauge cluster i'm fine with the seven inch it's not a huge deal to be a digital reader for me because typically when you get into toyota opposed to a lexus and it's a digital reader you're not going to be seeing everything that you'll see in your infotainment screen on the gauge cluster back to some pros you do have more soft materials when you get up the tier for the camry opposed to the rivals turn radius is about three lanes we got it in sport let's see how she does
Road noise does filter in a touch. The steering is a bit light, so you can move in and out of lanes without any issues. And that's a good thing for traffic purposes. It's not that long of a vehicle, but because this is the four cylinder variant and not the V6, I wouldn't go too crazy unless you're already going. But if you're kind of at that midpoint range, it's not a turbocharged, so it's not gonna feel like lag, but it can have a little sluggish feel when you're pushing the throttle in which it's changing the gears. Another pro, eight speed automatic transmission, no CVT. So when you are looking at comparable rivals, Toyota is already doing a good job in the sense of giving you all the safety, non CVT, great MPGs, room for a family. The storage pockets in the door could be larger because when you're looking at a family sedan, it's almost the same pocket as a Corolla in which this is a longer vehicle and I'm upgrading from a Corolla purposely because I need the space for the back seat, the front occupants and cargo capacity. But let me know your thoughts in the comments. And if you're new to the channel, consider subscribing. Check out the next video, merchandise, website and Instagram. Leave a comment and a like. And I'd like to thank Stadium Toyota for giving us this 2024 Toyota Camry XLE for our car review.